Hey everyone, Brady from TextureLabs.org here. So it's always cool when I see a piece of work and I think that is an artist who knows their blending modes because as varied as all these images are, I believe they're all making use of a specific and kind of tricky blending mode. A blending mode that generally seems to be one of the fastest ways to ruin a perfectly good image. But once you get a sense of how it works, this blending mode can be a very powerful tool for everything from creating grungy details to texture overlays to surreal solarized effects. What is this mystery blending mode? Difference. Now, difference is one of the inversion modes, meaning it generally gets used as a utility for lining up layers, that kind of thing. But today we're gonna to take a look at how to use it for some awesome creative effects. Let's get into Photoshop and get started. All right, so I'm starting with a very simple composition, just solid black and white. And this is a great way to get a sense of exactly how difference mode functions, but it's also one of the most common ways that I see this blending mode put to use. And that is not just with a black and white starting point, but with two layers that are both black and white. So this black and white layer set to difference over this black and white image. And this is gonna illustrate kind of the one key thing to remember about this blending mode. In a layer set to difference, black does nothing and white inverts. So here's an easy way to put this to work. Use a black and white texture that's mostly black. Remember, black does nothing, white inverts. So set to difference, this is gonna leave most of the image alone, but wherever there are these white details in the texture, it's inverting the black to white and the white to black. So what happens is we get this really nice symmetry in the application of the texture. We get the same black grunge in the whites and white grunge in the blacks. And as a matter of fact, this basic setup, a black and white layer with a very dark black and white texture set to difference, is one of the most useful ways to use this blending mode. So most of the time, if you see a really dark texture, the instinct is to set it to screen mode. But if you set it to difference, it'll create details not just in the blacks, but those same details inverted in the whites. So this is a great way to apply all kinds of grungy effects from photocopy textures to really fine details, spray paint effects, rolled ink textures. I really love this for typographic images. It's a really, really simple and also a pretty powerful technique. All right, now let's introduce just one more variable in here and look at what happens when we have an image that's not just black and white, but has grays in it too, like a black and white photograph. So we'll also put some grays in the difference layer. So I've created a gradient. I'm gonna set it to difference. And what we get is this nice transition from a positive image to an inverted image. And it's what happens in the grays here where it fades from positive to negative that's really interesting because what you might think would happen would be the same as this, an invert adjustment layer with a gradient in the mask, right? The invert is fading in across the image. But if you invert something and set it to 50%, it cancels itself out and you just get gray, meaning we have this kind of dead area in the middle where the invert is fading out. But with difference mode, as it fades out, we get this really cool solarized effect happening in the midtones. Now, as a side note, if I set this layer to exclusion blending mode, it's actually exactly the same as invert. Exclusion and difference, very similar blending modes, but it's what happens in the midtones, this solarized effect that distinguishes difference. So I'm gonna delete this layer, and what I'm gonna do is the same thing as earlier. Drop a texture on here that's mostly black, or at least pretty dark. So that's gonna mostly leave the image alone, but you get these little specks of inverted details, and we also get a little bit of this cool solarized effect in the dark grays, kind of that crossover area from positive to negative. So this is a cool way to create sort of an analog vintage solarized effect. It could be nice to then add a little bit of color tone after applying the texture. You guys might know I'm a huge fan of using gradient maps. I just find gradient maps to be an easy and kind of intuitive way to tone an image. And I've got some presets here actually sampled from a bunch of vintage photos. I'll link to these presets if you wanna download them. But that makes a pretty cool effect. However, we don't always have to use something grungy to use difference blending mode. Here's something totally different. Check out this butterfly pattern set to difference. That creates a pretty awesome effect too. Here's another black and white texture, and I'm also gonna invert that to make it mostly black. So this is gonna create a heavier effect, but kind of hard to believe you can get that out of a single layer set to a single blending mode. In fact, if I scrub through the different blending modes, most of them feel like the texture is just sitting on top, but difference has a way of interacting with the layer that gives it a little something extra. 
Now, here's an important thing to know about Difference. It's one of these special eight blending modes, meaning it has this bonus feature where you can dial down the effect using fill instead of opacity, and you get this subtle but much more organic result than just bringing down the opacity. So, of course, highly recommended to make a mental note of the special eight blending modes. Okay, so, so far we've only looked at black and white and not at any color, and there's a reason for that. Difference blend mode inverts the brightness, but it does so on the red channel the green channel and the blue channel separately, meaning it ends up inverting the colors as well. And when you start inverting brightness and have inverted colors, things go haywire really quickly. That being said, once you have a good grasp on how this blend mode operates, there are some opportunities for really nice effects. And this Shining Girls poster was actually my first point of reference for this video. I love this image, this popped up on my TV, and I thought, wow, what a great image. I wonder how it's made, and I wonder if I'm seeing difference blend mode. And of course, the quality of this photograph is a huge part of what makes it a great image, but as far as the treatment goes, I thought I would run a quick test. So here's an image of Elizabeth Moss that I found online, and I'm gonna take the same texture that we used a minute ago, set it to difference mode, and right away we're seeing this inversion happening in almost all the same places, the hair, the shadows under the nose, the lips, the corner of the eye, and if I give this grunge layer just a little bit of greenish color, it's hard to know if this is how this image was built, but it certainly seems like at least one way that you could accomplish this effect. And I think the key here to using difference blend mode with color is that the colors are very subtle, desaturated, almost monochromatic, and so you don't run the risk of getting too psychedelic. There is one case I found where you can get some cool effects using a lot of color. If we go all the way back to this solid black and white image and then use a texture that has a lot of color, but color within a very narrow range, like just blues and cyans. So here we're gonna get this wild inverted color, but because the color is fairly limited, we're at least gonna end up with a more deliberate looking complementary color scheme. Okay, well that's it for now, but I hope this video might encourage you to check out a blend mode that often flies under the radar. You can download any of the textures used in this video at texturelabs.org. I'll link to those below. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.